A huge thank you to all the super sponsors who make it possible for me to make these videos. Visit David X Newton on Patreon to join the ASCII Brigade. In the last video we looked at how to set up a thinker that orchestrates some things from the background, and to get other objects to retrieve and communicate with it. Let's now go back to the UI side, and display some of its information on the screen instead of relying on our debugging console messages. This means going back to our orb UI handler again. In here we'll retrieve our orb multiplier thinkers instance, and format the current multiplier value into a string. Here I'm using the cryptic looking format x%.1f, but this just means the literal letter x followed by a fractional number with exactly one decimal place. Again, you can take a look at the string page on the Zdoom wiki to get a list of the available formats. Then I'm going to draw this string to the screen in the same way that I did the orb count earlier, this time aligning the text to the left and using a different colour. I've also chosen to use the big font this time, which meant I had to create a second hut font next to where we set up the first one. Set up your display how you like, and then we're ready to test again. But can you tell what's coming? Yes, Scope has foiled us again. We can't call the getInstance function from the UI, because the orb multiplier thinker object, like all thinkers, exists in the play scope, and using network events won't help here because we need a response, we're not just sending a signal one way. Instead, we're going to do what we saw in the static event handler class a while ago, and put a function in a different scope from the rest of the class. The keyword we're going to be using is clear scope, which makes a function callable from both the UI and play scopes, but puts other limits on them in exchange. Just like UI scoped functions, clear scope functions can only read from the play scope and can't write to it. This means that we'll have to create an alternative get instance method that only ever tries to read. This one's called get read only instance, and it won't try to create a new orb multiplier thinker if one isn't available, it will just return null instead. We can't attempt to create a new orb multiplier thinker here because we're not in the play scope, and creating a new thinker would count as writing to the play scope. So let's make our orb UI handler use that. By calling the clear scope method, we'll be able to read from the thinker from the UI scope. Test this again, and you'll find that GZDoom starts up without a problem, but then try entering a map and you'll encounter it moaning about something else. VM execution aborted tried to read from address 0 is an error that you're likely to encounter a lot when piecing Zscript together, and it sounds a lot scarier than it really is. Despite it sounding like an issue with low level memory management, the problem is usually that you're attempting to call a method or alter a property on a null. And thinking through our code again, it's easy to see why this happens. The instance of orb multiplier thinker is only created the first time get instance is called. Currently, that's called for the first time when a monster dies. The get read only instance function is called from the UI right from the start of the level, and that's going to return null if the conditions for actually creating the thinker haven't happened yet. There are a couple of things we can do to safeguard ourselves against this. First, it definitely pays to code defensively and handle the condition where we just don't have an orb multiplier thinker yet. Perhaps we can make x1.0 the default for the multiplier text, and if we don't have an orb multiplier thinker we'll just skip replacing that. And if we want to make sure that the orb multiplier thinker exists from the start of the level, we just have to make sure we tell the game to create it when the level starts. We can do this by adding a call to the getInstance method in our orb setup event handler in the world loaded function. The game will start up correctly again now, and this is beginning to look a lot more satisfying. The display of the multiplier encourages the player to keep it topped up. I've added a little extra here by changing the font colour to white when the countdown has very recently been renewed, giving the display a small flash when the multiplier is increased. Let's add one more element, a display of how much time the player has remaining to kill another demon before losing their multiplier. We could do this just by putting a third number on the screen, but a diminishing bar would have a much more urgent visual effect. This involves drawing another image to the screen. There's a potential bar graphic in the project resources zip called HUD bar, and this time we only want to display part of this image depending on how close our countdown is to zero. There's a specific function for this kind of situation in the status bar class called drawbar, which is very similar to the draw image function, but takes two images and displays a portion of one on top of the other. The first two arguments for drawbar are the lump names for the foreground and background images. In this example I'm not using an image for the background behind the bar, so I'm leaving this blank. Then it takes the current and maximum values for the bar, which it will use to calculate how much of the foreground image to draw. In this case, these will be our orb thinker's countdown and max countdown values. 
The next argument is the position, and I'm putting my bar just below the orb count. Now we get to some new parameters. The first is an int called border. If you're using a background image, this will tell the bar to cut off this number of pixels around the edges of the foreground so that the empty bar graphic behind it will show through. I'm not using a background image here, so I'm using a zero. Next is a set of flags describing the direction in which to draw the bar, horizontally, vertically, and whether it should be reversed from its usual counting direction. I'm using shader HORZ, which draws the bar horizontally, counting from left to right, which is the default and is equivalent to putting zero for this parameter. After that, we're back in familiar territory. We provide a set of flags describing where our positioned coordinates are meant to count from and what the origin point of the graphics should be. If you start the game now, you should be able to see the bar appearing when a monster is killed and then slowly diminishing as the countdown continues. That's the straightforward way to do this, but it's a bit small and the drawbar function lacks a scale option. This could be solved by just redrawing the graphic, but to show you some more drawing related Z script, I'll go over another solution we can use to do the parts we need from drawbar manually. One of the other tools we have in the status bar is the set clip rect function. This will let you specify a bounding box that subsequent drawing commands are limited to. If we invoke some mathematics to set this bounding box to be shorter than the width of our graphic, we'll be able to control how much of the bar is displayed by ourselves. We'll start off by replacing the draw bar call with draw image instead in basically a copy and paste of the earlier draw image call for HUD orb. This allows us to use the scale parameter to make the bar a decent size compared to the rest of our arrangement. Now we need to work out some values describing how much of the image we want to display, and pass those into set clip rect so it can limit where draw image draws to. Let's start by making separate variables for the vector 2s for our bar coordinates and scale, as we'll need to use these in a couple of places. The top left corner of our clipping rectangle will be the same as the top left corner of the bar, so that part's easy. Now we need to know a bit about the size of the bar graphic. It would be reasonable here to just check the size of our graphic manually and use that here, because this is a graphic that isn't going to change during gameplay, but this is a good chance to introduce the texture manager Texman, which can be used to get all sorts of useful information about the graphics in your WAD. Its check for texture function will search for a texture with a given name and return it as a texture ID object if one exists. Here we're going to ask it for information about our HUD bar graphic. Most graphic related functions in Zscript will deal with these texture IDs and not just strings representing graphic lump names like in Decorate and ACS. So having got hold of our texture ID for HUD bar, we'll get its size as a vector too by calling the textman's get scaled size function on it. There is also a function called get size, but it returns two separate ints, like we saw in the bindings and controls a few videos ago. To get our starting point for the bounding box, we want to multiply our texture size by the scale in both X and Y dimensions. This will give us the size of the full bar on screen. Now we want to work out how much of the bar we want to display. We'll assume the X width is 0 to start off with, then after making sure we have an orb multiplier handler, we'll perform the actual calculation. The ratio should be the current countdown value of the orb multiplier divided by the maximum countdown value. So if the countdown is at 175 out of 350, we want half of the bar to display, and if it's at 35 out of 350, we want one tenth of it to display. Here we need to cast or convince the countdown value to become a double first, because otherwise we would be trying to divide an int into a fractional value, and the result would always be zero. Having got our ratio, we'll multiply the x value of our size vector by it to get the final dimensions that we want our clipping box to be. To apply the clipping rectangle, we call statusbar.setClipRect, and it takes four parameters. The x and y coordinates where the box should begin, and then the width and height of the box. This will take effect on the next call to draw image, limiting the area that it can draw to. After our draw image call, we reset the clipping rectangle with clear clip rect, as this will allow subsequent commands to draw to the screen entirely again. With all of this in place, start the game again and you should see the bar diminishing smoothly as the countdown continues, with the amount it's able to draw scaling with the value of the countdown. If something looks wrong, you can always scatter some printf lines around your code, or even draw the values of variables to the screen with the draw string function to help you identify the problem. This project is really taking shape now. We have some multiplier logic and expiring pickups encouraging the player to move quickly and aggressively, accumulating that multiplier and collecting the evidence 
ever-increasing collection of red orbs that burst out of the fallen monsters. Because it runs without altering any of the existing GZ Doom classes, it will even run on very heavily customised wads or even entirely different GZ Doom based games. Feel free to clean up the remaining debugging messages and play around with the balance a bit, adjusting the multiplier bonuses and the costs of converting orbs to health to your liking. And next time we'll look at adding some more incentives to save those orbs up.